It's Pink Friday 2021 and here's a message from one of our survivors. Hello, I'm Robin Roberts and I am happy to join the American Cancer Society in the fight against breast cancer. As a breast cancer survivor and proud Mississippi native, I'm honored to support Pink Friday, a fundraiser for breast cancer awareness. We are all, we all have a part to play in this fight. And by working together, one day we are determined to find a cure for breast cancer. Get your tickets now to support this wonderful event. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. Time to hydrate. The best kept secret in sports. No longer a secret. Well, I got it. I got it. Of course I got it. I got it right after work. That's right. I got the COVID-19 vaccine. Because self-care. I got it because I wanted to get back to my normal. I was one of the first ones that got it. And now, I'm helping others get theirs. So let's get it together. Sign up and get your vaccine today, and let's stop COVID in its tracks. Visit IGotItMS.com. Well, I got it. I got it. You already know. I got the COVID-19 vaccine. I got it because you can only do prom once. I got it because my team got big buzz this year. I got it because my wife needs all the help he can get. I got it because this school year is going to be awesome. I got it because I missed my friends. Sign up to get your vaccine today. Find out how at igotitms.com. Um, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and for all those who's listening and watching it from around the world. And we are now live from the corner of Dalton and Lynn Street. It's the show where we take you inside the game before the game begins. It's, it's the, the free game. Free game. With your host, Charles Bishop and Neely. So get ready because we free game harder than the other show's part. It's the free game. Welcome into Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium. It is the pregame show. It is Bishop. It is Neely. It is the rivalry of all rivalries. It is Jackson State versus Alcorn. Neely, you already have a perch, brother, up there on top of the roof. Man, perch. Speaking of perch, I smell some pan trout. The fish fries, the barbecue grills are coming over the top of the stadium. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is not green screen. That's real. We are on the rooftop. We are on the rooftop right above the Tigers' locker room as we get ready 
for the Soul Bowl. Jackson State versus Alcorn. Jackson State having already secured and punched his ticket to the SWAG championship representing the East, but still unfinished business, as Coach Flea would say, because we want to go undefeated in the SWAC, and we want to shut down the hopes of Alcorn representing the West as well. So we can do all of those things today, Chuck. Big game, we- big atmosphere, great weather. It's Soul Bowl weekend. It's Soul Bowl weekend, as you, as you mentioned. Uh, we clinched the SWAC East last week against a very tough, very game. Southern Jaguar football team, hostile environment, uh, but our guys came through in the end. 21 to 17, tremendous victory, a uh, snatching victory from the ever present jaws of it wasn't defeat, but, <laughs> but we got the W down there in Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Well, you know, it was, it was about to be defeat, Chuck. We were down. You yeah. know, we, were, we were losing in the fourth quarter, and we were losing late in the fourth quarter. But I will tell you this, man, and I, and I, and I say this sincerely. When it comes to playing your rival, you know, Coach Prime even talked about, you know, when people remember great games, they don't necessarily remember blowouts. You know, you want it to be, you want it to be a fight. And, and I can't think of any better way than to beat the Southern Jaguars to not only snatch victory away from them with mere minutes left in the game, but also to clinch the Swag East Championship on their field. Because, Chuck, as you and I know and Tiger Nation know, it has been a while since we have beat Southern. And like Coach Prime said this spring, you better get us in the spring because you're not going to get us in the fall. And true to form, that is exactly what has happened this season. Nobody has gotten us in the fall in the swag. We want to finish that regular season out today by defeating Alcorn. But last week was exciting. Man, Tiger Nation traveled big time to Baton Rouge. Uh, That stadium really doesn't have a visitor side. It's their stadium. Uh, So we, we were loud and we were proud. As Chuck Bishop said it, what you what you call it, Chuck? You wanted full throat. That's what you said on last week's show. You got full throat, man. We got we got full throat. <laughs> so we pulled out the victory van. We got some clips and coaches' interviews uh, coming from last week later in the show. So y'all stay tuned with that before we dig into today's game. Bishop is in media center. Neely's on the roof once again. I get screwed over, Chuck. You're sitting in a nice room, climate control. Got croissants. Got bio steel to drink. I'm standing on the roof with no croissants, no bio steel, but we're going to work on that at a commercial break. We're going to work on that at a commercial break. As you mentioned, 21-17, win over Southern last week. Uh, Shador Sanders, quarterback, won. Huge game last week, 24 of 31, 260 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, did have two picks, but, I mean, uh, the poise uh, to lead this Jackson State team in the final minutes of the game. Uh, you can't say enough about Shador to Malachi Wildman to secure uh, that that win last week in the defense, you can't say enough about this tremendous Jackson State defense. They lead the nation in sacks. They're number four in the nation uh, in total defense, complete and total package, bro. Complete total package, man. Defense, uh, you know, gave up more points in the first half than they have all season, but it was still a a bend, don't fold, don't break mentality. They never stopped believing. And uh, got to the second half and continued to shut them out. Got to the fourth quarter. And for, I think, Chuck, the third or fourth game in a row now, no opponent has scored on us in the fourth quarter. There it is. There it is. Uh, you talk about finishing the fight in this Jackson State defense. Uh, they bend a little, but breaking is not an option. I tell you what, uh, they really turned up the pressure, turned up the screws, if you will, on that final drive. Uh, James Houston will add it to his sack total last week. Uh, he is second in the nation in terms of uh, sacks. But, again, this Jackson State defense was able to get it done. Shiloh Sanders with the interception to secure the W last week against Southern. Yeah, you know, it was it was phenomenal, man, to, uh, to see uh, Coach Prime, who has talked often about having recruited his sons to come play here. And, you know, one of the first questions we asked him on the pregame show seems like forever ago was because it was before the spring season kicked off was, was he playing daddy ball? Uh, and, you know, did his sons really have uh, what, it, what it took to be a part of this Tiger team? And I think what has been evident uh, this fall season, the Jumbotron is starting up. So, Chuck, let me know if it's, uh, it's a little too much in the background. What's been evident this season is that Shadur Sanders can play quarterback and Shiloh Sanders can play safety. And to have that game uh, be secured on two plays from them, their father, their head coach's first game back uh, from his health issues on the road and clinching the swag title, it was just a beautiful moment now. 
no doubt, a beautiful moment. And you're coming through loud and clear, so uh, no worries on any end. Um, a tough week this past week uh, for this Jackson State football team in terms of their preparation for Alcorn. Uh, they had a uh, young dog was uh, in the locker room just uh, at homecoming, and unfortunately this past week uh, was uh, killed tragically up there in Memphis. But uh, it had a profound effect in terms of uh, – this generation of kids really a, a huge young dog fan. Yeah, you know, and uh, as part of our being embedded with the program, we were at practice – when Coach Prime took a moment uh, to speak on uh, Young Dolph and the tragedy that happened earlier this week. We lost a warrior today, man. We lost a true dog. We lost a, someone's father, someone's son, someone's man, someone's friend. Some of y'all friends and some of y'all know me and Young Dolph, man. The game I hear of life is real. Not everyone's happy about your success. Not everyone's happy about your come up. Not everyone's happy about your prosperity or how you walk, talk, even carry yourself, even what we're doing here. Not everyone's happy about that. So understand your environment and who you're around and be cautious and be careful about that, man. Do not take nothing and nobody you're around for granted. We lost a good one today, man, who, who I know him personally, who had so much love and, and compassion and, and the way he came in and embraced all y'all and treated y'all like y'all was the homies, man. So uh, let's have a small moment of silence. Let's get to it, fellas. Let's have a great day. Let's focus. Poignant moment there, a moment of silence with Young Dolph, uh, Coach Prime, and uh, Young Dolph had uh, gotten close during the course of the season there. And I tell you what, it was tough. It was uh, breaking news and whatnot this past week. But uh, I tell you what, uh, it's tough, tough, tough news moving forward. Yeah, you know, there's a special relationship, Chuck, between uh, Jackson, Mississippi, and Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, short three hours drive and work from each other. Uh, a lot of folks from Memphis come to school here. Uh, a lot of Jackson State graduates move to the Memphis area. Uh, so, you know, there's always a special kinship. You can't be in Jackson and not see a sign that doesn't direct you to Memphis. You can't be in Memphis and don't see a sign that doesn't direct you to Jackson. Uh, and so when Young Golf came down to hang out with the team and visit with the team, uh, it was a special moment, a special bond. Uh, and then to have him lose his life so tragically. And I tell you what's, what's fitting about it, uh, we've been getting support from an organization called The Black Man Is Not My Op. You know, The Black Man Is Not My Opponent. The Black Man Is Not My Opposition. I'm wearing some of their gear right now. Uh, Chuck, you have some. Coach Prime has yeah. been giving this some. And, mm -hmm. and recently, uh, just like Coach Prime did when he first got here, he's been speaking out uh, on black-on-black -black violence, on this crime wave that's happening around the nation, particularly in our culture, this hip-hop culture, uh, the murder rate increasing here in Jackson. Uh, so it's, it's time for no beef. It's time for black men to learn how to apologize and let go. It's time to recognize that the black man is not my opposition. He's not my opponent. That we got to work through better means of conflict resolution. So, 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 so y'all can go out there, follow them on Instagram. Easy to find. Black man is not my op. A black man is not my op. They even hooked us up, Chuck. We got some personalized. Yes. Got some personalized hoodies, man, to uh, continue that message and spread uh, this positivity around uh, that we got to stop these senseless killings and learn how to work together. No doubt about it. We have to continue to work on stopping these senseless killings that really can plague our community. So that's a tremendous message uh, with regards to a black man. It's not my opponent, not my opposition. So I appreciate you uh, showing off that sweatshirt because uh, at a time like this, it couldn't be more poignant, Neely. Yes, sir. Time for times such as these, man. Uh, now somebody is black in my opponent today, and that's all for So we're gonna dig in, dig in into that game. Uh, but we're gonna all get along, man. I'm looking out at the tailgate over at Dr. Sims tailgate. I see the smoke coming over the stadium, and you know we open the gates today at 10 a.m. And yes. I know there's gonna be some depth issues, but Chuck, as I look at the student section, it's about 70% full. 
the alumni section is next to it, 109 and 110, or about 60% full. Uh, folks are coming on in. Like, it is, we are still some – we're so far away from kickoff, the clock hadn't started the countdown yet, but the fans are coming in. The Tiger's mouth is open leading to the locker room. Uh, Tiger walk is going to happen at 11 a.m. The boom is marching in at 11.15. And if you're looking for the time that all form will be going up the ramp, don't worry about that time because they're not going up the ramp. <laughs> there will be no ramp uh, for the Braves today <laughs> and the sounds of dynamite. <laughs> yeah. No time to announce for that. We can announce that the boom is coming in 11.15, but there ain't no time that all corn is going up that ramp. They're going to take their ass up to the steps right there by the box seats over this way. That's, that's where they're going. Look, follow, follow this hand. Let's see where they're going. They're not going there. They're going over there. Go up to the little steps. Go on, on, sit your ass down now. Get ready to take this deal. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I tell you what, as we get prepared for this tough all-court game, Coach Prime, he started us off with some words to get ready for this game week, and uh, we'll take a look at that now as we get into this game, Jackson State versus all Coaches, have you really coached your best yet? Have you walked away from that coach now, Coaches? When the last time you walked away from a game saying collectively, we did that. Not we barely got back. Not man, I'm glad we all came first me, but but we were done. What was that last time? Alabama in here? Yeah? So what's been happening since then? What y'all been chilling? What, what's been going on? We better than what we've been showing. I want y'all to have coach here tomorrow. We're going to out-coach them tomorrow. We know we got more talent. We know we're going to be more dominant. We know we're going to be deliberate because we got better kids. But we got to out-coach them tomorrow. We good with that? All right, let's sit down. Eleven on deck. Hey, do do. Go base, be ready for that goal. Hey, 
So that was a tremendous look at last week, Roy, if you let Neely in, uh, in terms of Jackson State and Southern. And Coach Prime challenging his coaches uh, at the beginning of that clip uh, to, to tighten up screws, get better uh, week in, week out, that uh, we still have not hit our potential in terms of uh, what we were able to do on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. So it was a, a poignant moment in terms of Coach Prime challenging the coaches at the beginning of that video to continue to work hard, continue to get better. as Neely, check back in here with us. Hey man, it's outstanding out there on the roof, Chuck. Great right, view. Beautiful out there. I don't know, as Dennis Driscoll walks by and he can confirm, I don't know if we had this size of a crowd this early. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I know it's, I know we're going to have 60,000 here today, but, Chuck, it is 1030, 1028 exactly, and uh, student section is full, alumni section is filling in. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a great day out there. going to be a great day. Man, it looks beautiful out there. As we pulled in, uh, there was a line of cars to get into the Mississippi Veterans Memorial Stadium, a line leading up to uh, the gates, the gates opening at, at 10, and, and for this stadium to start filling up. Uh, we're still roughly two and a half hours from, from game time, one o'clock kickoff. So, uh, tremendous atmosphere, uh, Jackson State and Alcorn. We, we may be percent. we may be two and a half hours from game time, but we two point three seconds for me digging my ass up at this uh, croissant here. Chuck been down here <laughs> cheating with the croissants. Look at that! Just uh, I don't know. <laughs> we would like to thank our sponsors today. <laughs> of course, title sponsor Chuck Muller's attorney at law, uh, Broad Street Bakery, man. The the good folks, uh, Mangia Bene, uh, the, the restaurants that represent Mangia Bene, Broad Street Bakery, break, Bakery. Uh, uh, salad Mookie's, pizza and ice cream, and of course, uh, Bravo uh, Restaurant. We thank them as always. Chambers and Gaylor, always right there with us. And of course, the sponsor of Tiger's Mouth, BioSteel. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you all for today's presentation of the pregame show with Bishop and Neely here on the Black College Sports Network. As we get ready for this Alcorn game, man, I tell you what, poignant message from Coach Prime to start the week. Uh, as we kind of take a look back at uh, and kind of think how things ended last week. And then Coach Flea, uh he gets us right into. As I shamelessly plug our sponsors by saying, now that I have wolfed down that croissant from Grocery Breaker and wash it down. With a little bio. With a little bio steel. Let me also mention that last week, what was so key about that uh, session down there in Baton Rouge, when Coach Prime spoke to his coaches, to challenge them to let's out coach them. We know we have better athletes. We know we got a better play structure. Let's out coach them. And he literally had the coaches stand up and say, have you coached your best game yet? Hmm. Each individual unit coach, he had that conversation with them in front of the team. And I think, man, when you get to that uh, uh, late second quarter, you get to that third quarter, you get to that fourth quarter, you saw us out coach them. We made adjustments to the adjustments of the adjustments. Yeah, if that yeah. makes sense, like we, and, we and didn't we, and week to week. I've seen that happen. We watched that happen on the sidelines. Uh, watch it happen at halftime. Uh, these coaches and their prowess in terms of making those in-game adjustments has been tremendous. It has been, you know, and a lot of folks don't understand or get a glimpse. And that's what our role is here to show them uh, the expectation that Coach Prime has on himself as his well as his coaching staff that this is not something where we just blame players or blame officials, that no, he is motivating and coaching up his coaches. And you saw there in that exclusive look of him having that team meeting. And that was, again, that was his, his first time back. It was, you know, it was Friday night at the team hotel, and he spoke to the players and spoke to the coaches in front of the players and said, look, we got our coaches, guys. I'm, I'm calling you all out. We got to do better. And this is a guy talking to a team that even at that time was undefeated in the sweat. 
Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, yes, sir. Uh, Correct. The standard is the standard, and Coach Prime will tell you we have yet to play uh, a, a complete game. Uh, we have yet to come play uh, play where we win every quarter and also dominate on defense, offense, and special teams. So that's what he's going to be looking for today. That's what the emphasis was this week is we're not resting on the record. We want to go out and play the best brand of Tiger football we've played all year and win every quarter and dominate in all three phases of the game. Some concern among the Jackson State fan base as to uh, whether uh, they were going to take their foot off the gas, if you will, but uh-uh. Unfinished business, Coach Fleek talked a little bit about uh, what the ultimate goal is with regards to the Jackson State football team. And, Roy, let's take a look at that. All right, guys, we talked this morning about finish. All right, we're not done yet. That's the message this week. We're not done yet. Even though we clinched the East, we still have some unfinished business to do. All right, definitely defend home. We're in the state of Mississippi. All right, and then make sure that we're here for our SWAC championship home game. Everybody stand that purpose. Our mission. Let's make sure we stay in on, on that tr- on that track, that mind frame, that mindset. We are not done yet. Unfinished business. Sixty thousand come to see the show. We must put on the show. All right. Let's get a break loud. Hey, what up? Yeah, loud, loud, yeah. All right, y'all. Tigers on me. Tigers on three. One, two, three. Tigers. <laughs> Coach Please setting the scene for us this upcoming week against this tough all corn team. Unfinished business, taking care of the swag east. Hey, this is still all corn, still have to play all corn. There's a swag championship. The ultimate goal is still out in front of them. Yeah, and, you know, the ultimate goal is actually even beyond a swag championship. The ultimate goal is a national championship at the Celebration Bowl. Uh, This coaching staff uh, has not shied away from that, that we want to win the swag championship, and it's still not done then. We want to go to Atlanta and win the Celebration Bowl against uh, whoever may be representing me at South Carolina State. But whoever whoever's representing me at, uh, we want that game as well. So the expectation continues to be high for this program, for the staff, uh, from Coach Prime all the way down. Uh, so today is no different. You know, yeah. this is not a game I've seen fans out there suggesting on social media, hey, are we going to rest the starters? And, and you know, we have a week off before the championship. We can get some rest in at Thanksgiving, hey, go home, have a little turkey dressing. But we practiced hard <laughs> this week. We had the same practice schedule this week that we've had in other weeks because this game still means everything. The most important game is the next game, and this is the next game. And, and, you know, uh, you tapped into that uh, the Sunday after that huge victory over Southern. They, they were right back at it. And uh, uh, it, it speaks to uh, this team's this team's will, not losing focus. Mm-hmm. They were right back on the practice field that Sunday afternoon. And, uh, you know, it's like uh, turn the page. Uh, it is what it is. It's all one week. Uh, you got to get that those juices flowing right back again because unfinished business doesn't go forward. Unfinished business. You know, I just love what Coach Flea was putting that out there. Uh, unfinished business has been the mantra. Uh, looking forward. Baby. <laughs> that's that's a good segue to another croissant bite too, <laughs> because that croissant was some unfinished business. <laughs> yes, I mean, I still, man, they're huge, man. Go to Broad Street Bakery and get y'all some. Look, oh man, look at that hole there. That's exciting when you see a hole. Well, it's exciting. <laughs> My God. It's, it's provocative. <laughs> provocative, exactly. Nobody knows what it means, but it gets the people going, Chuck. So. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, I can always count on you for a, a Jay-Z kind of a Kanye moment, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, as we take a look going forward, uh, you had an opportunity to talk with Coach T.C. Taylor in terms of uh, where he wants this offense going, going forward. Uh, it's all corn. Uh, and one of the things that um, I took from this talk is, uh, although this team might not always understand the magnitude of this uh, Jackson State all corn rivalry, I mean, honestly, we have a lot of uh, new faces, uh, guys that are new to the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Coach T.C. Taylor, he's playing this game, he's coaching this game. He's putting it out there. Yes, sir. Why should I have to tell you what you said? Let's just go to T.C. <laughs> Let's go Taylor. To it. There and hear go. what T.C. Taylor said this week when we went to practice to talk to our coaches. Coach T.C. Taylor, Midway Alcorn Week. Looking forward to it. 
you know, uh, coming to the end on this season, we already know that we're locked in pretty much for the championship game, but this is a huge rivalry. You know, uh, we call it a big family reunion, a lot of bragging rights, Six State. And um, the guys came out here yesterday and the other day and putting together good work so far this week. You know, you talked uh, in team meetings about the importance of uh, getting the run game established. How it's everybody's job to help the run game. Uh, what are you looking forward to taking advantage of with this game plan this weekend? Well, I, I'm just looking forward to the, how well the offensive line is going to play. Like I told those guys, those five dudes up front, we go as they go um, as a unit. Um, they got some good guys on the D-line. They play fast. They get to the ball as a, a group. So we know we got to be fundamentally sound, and, you know, we got to be mentally locked in to the assignment when we are scheming up these runs to try to get this thing going on the ground. Seeing is believing you are one of the few on this coaching staff with experience not only coming off that Southern game when you were able to talk to the players about that, but experience in this Alcorn rivalry. Seeing is believing, though. Uh, do, you, do you think they're ready for what they're going to expect? I think so. You know, the thing a little bit different about this group, a lot of these guys are new to this, so they don't know. It's just another game to them. But, you know, to me, you know, being played in it a couple of times and the magnitude of it, I got family on both sides. So it's huge right now for me. But uh, these guys, that might be a good thing that they don't know the magnitude of it. So they're just going to come out there and play their football. They bring the ball. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Coach T.C. Taylor, offense coordinator for this Jackson State football team. And uh, like you mentioned, the guys might not know the magnitude of this game, but uh, we know growing up within this Jackson State Alcorn robbery, this is huge. This is aunt versus uh, your other aunt on the opposite side. This is mom, dad. This is a family reunion. Atmosphere. But, you know, you're from the hood, Chuck. You're one of the guys that got uncles that's younger than you. <laughs> you know, how you, in the hood, you like 19 and you got an uncle that's 12. <laughs> that's, that's you know that's uh so it's that kind of rivalry you know you got to offer them all going after you graduate from Jackson State. <laughs> but no, oh, I kid, I kid is what I do. But you're exactly right, Chuck. Uh, but it was the same thing with the Southern game. Yeah. A lot of the new players, now the Keontae Hamptons of the team, they know about you know traveling through Southern and Southern coming here. Uh, but it was a poignant moment. And then the word, that's a pretty big word. I'm using one of your words. I like that. I like yeah. that. There was a moment with, see, I didn't use it again, though. There was a moment with uh, uh, Zay Bolden pregame, and he was taken in the crowd, and it's on our Instagram. And he said, this is why I came here. Yeah. This, yes, this is did. why I came here. And then post game, he even did a post and said, you know, I played in a lot of rivalries because he played at Florida State, but there is nothing like this. The fans, the band, the team, it's like a true rivalry. And so it's so similar to this. This team, even the Keontes, this team hasn't seen 60,000 people in the vet. Good point. Good point. Good point. This, 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 coaching, this coaching staff, outside of T.C. Taylor's playing days and outside of Coach Otis Ridley's being from Jackson, this coaching staff hasn't seen 60,000 in the vet. Yeah, this so it's going to be a sobering staff. experience coming off the, the jubilation of the win in Baton Rouge over that rivalry to come home to host this Soul Bowl, to stay on course, to be undefeated in the swag. And when they come out that tiger's mouth and literally see 60,000. It's going to be phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah, uh, you talk about a hostile environment last weekend. The guys really soaked it all up and really enjoyed it. But you can just imagine what it's going to be like this week. This is the essence of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Jackson State bringing their fan base to wherever. Jackson State versus Alcorn. This is this is beautiful. This is what you love. To it see. really is, man. It's uh, <laughs> to quote the old NFL N NFL footage. When you hear Bill Parcells, Bill Parcells say, "This is why you lift all the weights." Like this, this is why you lift. <laughs> it's, it's, it's days like today, man. Beautiful weather. Uh, too late to get the ticket, but it's not too late to get here and there soak up go. some of this atmosphere. The tailgates are going. Uh, you know, tickets are gone. Uh, you can get one from your cousin or from your uncle that's younger than you. Uh, you know, I know, like I said, Chuck got them uncles. He's ten years older than y'all, but he might be. Able to, he might be able to get a ticket from one of them. But, uh, you know, tailgates are packed. Stadium is filling in already. Uh, you know, Dennis Driscoll, looking at him, this beautiful ginger beard, opened up the gates at 10 a.m. Band is going to march in 11, 15. Team does a Tiger Walk at 11. We'll be here for another hour or so on the show. Uh, kickoff is at 1 p.m. Yeah, it's all good in the hood, baby. Let's do it. We're going to get this. Good. Let's do it. And we got so much more to get to, man. Like, you know, we got these scripts. So I don't even look at them. 
Because <laughs> nowhere in this was I supposed to say something about Chuck's uncle being younger than him. That is the beauty of this live stream. <laughs> Some notes that we took from Coach Taylor this past week. Great job last week. Uh, but he made a great point. Uh, we're going to be getting everybody's best punch. Everybody's uh, best. Everybody's best punch uh, moving forward. Uh, that fourth quarter mentality, uh, we need to start the game with that fourth quarter mentality, playing with our hair on fire, things that mind, uh, things that nature, uh, and make up my, our mind in the fourth quarter that we got to get it done. Uh, got to improve on third down. Some of the uh, notes from this past week, coaches and players, got to be able to sustain the drives. And how you go about sustaining the drives is you got to get that one game in some manner up and going. Yeah, it, we, man, we beat that dead horse for a lot of games this year. Yes, uh, you know, is. we are we are undefeated, but we have still yet to be consistent in the run game. Uh, and so this is going to be yet another opportunity uh, to show that we are not one dimensional, uh, to show teams, and we only have about two teams left, you know, swag championship and the celebration ball, but to show the world uh, that we can run the ball and run the ball consistently. Uh, so, you know, uh, Coach Flea has been working with the backs this week, and I sat in on their film session, uh, and, and it's encouraging. You know, this offensive line is, is ready to run block. Uh, and if you can't get up to run block against your in-state rival, who can you get up to run block against? Speaking of which, man, we talk with Coach Otis really, man. He – he brought that flavor, as he always does, week in, week out, in terms of what Jackson State all form means. Let's take a look at Coach O, as we like to call him. Joe, we're back at practice coming off a clinch in the SWAC Eastern Division crown. How important it is to stay focused as we host all corn, although we've already punched our ticket to the big one? Yeah, we hadn't we hadn't done anything that we set out to do. That was just a part of the, of the plan. And uh, we got to finish. We got to finish. And we don't. We, we want to sweep this whole thing. We want to keep going, keep it going. We want to keep that momentum going until December. Mm -hmm. And that's what this weekend is about. It's about uh, some bragging rights for family members, for, uh, for Jacksonians, for the city, for the state, it's, it's for the South. It's just bragging rights going down, man. So we're excited about playing Alcorn, coming off a big win last night. Uh, any challenges uh, in your mind uh, to get this team to stay focused on that? Uh, you know, again, because we we already know not only we're in the SWAG championship, but we're hosting it. Uh, how do we stay dialed in? Well, I think you saw last night this team thrives in the moment. Uh, they they understand what's at stake every week. And, you know, sometimes we have some downs and some lows in those games. But at the end of the day, they rise to the occasions when the moments are, you know, most important and most critical. So I think going forward, you know, they know we're trying to play for a championship and not just a SWAC championship, a black college national championship. And that means a lot to us right now. And so we're fighting like hell to get there. Uh, any word to uh, Tiger Nation about showing up this weekend? If I got to tell you uh, to show up this weekend, it's a problem, I believe. Go Tigers. <laughs> Coach O with the walk off. I tell you what, uh, if you mute your mic, up, Roy. Mute your mic. All right, <laughs> go ahead, say it again. No, if you, if you can't get up for Jackson State Alcorn, then I, I don't know what else to tell you. This is uh, the ultimate robbery for Jackson State fans. A lot of Jackson State fans. Now, I will say what you was about to say. It was Coach O with the walk off for me, <laughs> like, like interview over, man. I'm not gonna entertain this. He, he, he really went, he went to park on hit him up. But I don't even know why I'm on this track. <laughs> and walked off. I'm going to let my little off. homies ride on y'all and walk off. There you go. That is uh, the ultimate, ultimate there, I'll tell you what. But, I mean, uh, our, our members of, of Jackson State Alcorn, is there anything that sticks out for you in terms of playing this game? Man, a lot of them, particularly when, you know, that era when we were going back and forth, traveling down there on that stretch, you know. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we gave kudos to Southern because one thing they have done is created a hostile environment to play in. And the Alcorn Jackson State rivalry is one of those games for us that it's a hostile environment. Whether Precisely. we go there or they come here, now we have fun at the tailgates and lead up, but there's some smack talking going on out there. In yes, the tailgate. sir. Yes, sir. There's going to be some heat in the stands, you know. This and and you remember Chuck uh, a few years back uh, when when uh, when Alcorn had secured a trip to the SWAC championship, and they had to come here, and we sent them to Houston with an L. And we yeah. had memes out there. Memes were just getting started. Like, yeah, you're going to Houston, but take this L with you, you know. <laughs> uh, and so they're coming here today to do the same thing. Same mentality. Yeah. They're coming here to do the same. They want to. They want to write their ship on that season by beating Jackson State at home and being the first team in the SWAC to defeat Jack State Tigers. The coaches have said it all week. Everybody's going to give us their best. 
we have a target on our back for everybody. Everybody is watching this game to figure us out, to see what they can do the next time they play us. And you want to be that guy. You want to be that guy to take down the champ and not champ in the literal sense, but the figurative sense. You know, we are the only undefeated team in the SWAC. Yeah. You yeah. know, everybody else has lost a SWAC game, y'all. We haven't. Alcorn would love to come in here and be like, we got them. And they still have uh, an outside opportunity to still play in the SWAC championship. But what they need is a victory today over our Jackson State Tigers. They need a little bit of help uh, from Prairie View. Prairie View plays Mississippi Valley State next week in uh, Prairie View. Uh, they would need a Prairie View loss. And you look up and you'll be seeing this all-corn state team again if they are able to get the W today. So a lot on the line. Still a lot on the line. But you know what the beauty of it is? So let me just say this, Chuck. We're going to win this game. In fact, we're going to beat the hell out of them. But let me just say this. Let's say all that let, that does take place. Mm. Guess what they got to come right back to? Right back here. <laughs> and play who? Jackson. So it look, you know, <laughs> now we're gonna we you know we're gonna kill a gnat with a sledgehammer. Don't, don't get it wrong. But should all of that miracle uh math swag math unfold, Jack, I take it as punch. We're we're in the game. Yeah. We're yeah. EA Sports, baby. We're in the game. We're in the game. And, and it's and it's coming right back here December fourth. So you know. Uh, for folks who could not make it this week and are going to be watching on ESPN uh, and are tuning into the pregame show, you know, go ahead and make your plans to come to uh, Jackson, Mississippi on December 4th for the SWAG Championship. But first things first, we want to take care of this unfinished business. We want to go undefeated in the SWAG. We want to defeat Alcorn for the Soul Bowl. Yes. All in the same year. All in the same year. Uh, and when you take a look at all of the elements, we talk offense, we talk defense, that third rail within this football team is special team. You had an opportunity to sit down and talk with Coach Allen Ricard in regards to uh, what he needs to see, what he saw this past week uh, from Southern. Let's take a look at what Coach Ricard had to say. Being special, focusing on uh, Alcorn. They're a really good uh, special teams unit. Coach well, they play hard, and you know we got our work cut out for us. And uh, but I I love our guys. You know, they came out yesterday ready to work, and I know it's going to be the same today. So um, you know I know we're going to be uh, well prepared. So we just going to finish up our uh, preparation uh, this week and uh, get ready for uh, Alcorn. One of the things you share with your unit uh, during the team meetings is that this Alcorn special teams has blocked a couple of punts this year. Yep. Uh, so what are we doing to be prepared and keep our wits about us for stuff like that? We just got to know our assignment. We got to know uh, we got to know what Alcorn does uh, on their uh, uh, punt return unit, and we got to know who we have individually, and we got to communicate, and we got to block. We got to block them up, and then we got to transition into coverage and go down there and uh, cover their uh, punt return guys. So. Uh, that's always the the game plan as far as uh, on the punt team, just making sure we know who we're blocking and then block them. Get them blocked up and uh, just make sure you communicate and everybody be on the same page. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Thank you. Coach Allen Ricard, as always, he lets us know what the special teams uh, should be looking for to uh, this week. I, I tell you what, uh, tremendous job last week. Uh, I'm always impressed by Coach Ricard. He has them so prepared for every eventuality okay <laughs> yeah they go through every situation man and uh one of the situations that we have to be aware of and it came up in that clip Alcorn has blocked four punts this year they blocked four punts yeah yeah they they are they are doing what they do on special teams and it, it flips the field so it is something that we have to be aware of special teams is going to come into play special teams is going to come into play we're going to have to establish better field position than they establish. Whatever yeah. that may mean, whatever that number is, we've got to put our offense uh, in a better position uh, special teams-wise. we got to put our defense in a better position special teams-wise. We have to have confidence in the kicking game and get a field goal or two today. There you go. There you go. Great point. Yeah, That's we got to get a field because we, we, we could be in some trick situations, tricky situations where close enough to kick it but don't have that confidence in the kicking game to kick it and may have to leave some points out there a time or two. Uh, and that changes the dynamic of the game and how you call the game and how the other team responds. So special teams is going to be crucial today. Uh, it's going to be crucial. Special teams is going to be crucial. Southern had a very interesting strategy last week where uh, they pooch punted it. Uh, I'm sorry, pooch kicked it uh, quite a bit last week. Sort of took the ball out of Zay Bolden's hands uh, in terms of rugby-style punting last week. Uh, same thing with regards to Warren Newman, but – it, it speaks to the prowess of the special teams. Zay Bolden yeah, is one of the that's most a respect dynamic. Thing. Yeah. That's a respect thing, man. Same thing in baseball. Don't be an idiot, man. Pitch around people. You yeah, know, let, yeah. let, let that guy Don't take a base. Don't let Barry Bonds beat you. Yeah, 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 let him take yeah. a base, man. Let him, you know, he beat you 
somebody else with an RBI, he's not going to beat you with a with a with a three run homer. Uh, yeah. So you can kick to Warren Newman and Zay Bolden if you want to. And and God, if you're listening, I hope y'all do kick to him. Like, please kick to him. You know, be arrogant enough to kick to those two guys. Uh, but the front line is going to have to know that when that squib kick comes, don't play hero ball. Let it go through you. You know, do your job and you're in lane with your assignments. Let that ball go through you. Let the guys with the hands get it. They can move the ball upfield. So it's going to take some discipline uh, on special teams because you're probably not going to get a lot of hang time up there. You're going to get some squibs across the ground. Uh, sure. You're going to get some directional kicks as they try to kick away from our guys that can really do damage. Yeah, yeah. One of the great things about the pregame show is, of course, the unprecedented access. And you had an opportunity uh, to sit and listen to uh, some of what the coaches were uh, giving our guys this past week. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the offensive line coach in terms of him setting up uh, this upcoming uh, week of playing all corn and, and what he gave our guys, what he poured into them uh, in film state. They remember in November. They remember in November. In November. Now, let's not going to walk up backers. They're going to bring the free safety. They play the four down and they're coming. Tap it. We got we to gotta have the ability to make our calls like push calls. We've got to have the ability to make our men. got to watch the freaking film, please. Now, O-line, quarterbacks, I know I know he watches it. Running backs, we put that blitz tape together for a reason. Got me? Now, sometimes the blitz, uh, we struggle, and we'll make an adjustment. But if you really look at it and know what's coming, you'll prepare yourself and we'll get it, right? You with me? Watch it. It's in there. Coaches put something, watch it, please. Watch it. It's alignment before playing defenses. They're going to move. They are going to move, and you got to start it today. Right, guys? Just like Coach said, you got to start it today. You with me? It was such a, I'm going to leave you with this. The resiliency of that fourth quarter, it was so beautiful. Because we kept saying, guys, we're getting frustrated. We're getting frustrated. And we make a play. We make a play, baby. It just took one. And then these guys, what do they do? They come off, back, 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 off. <laughs> off. And we get it again. Boom. Don't wait. Don't wait. Do it right. Let's do it to these dudes right away, man. Right away, off the bat. The thing that excites me about this opportunity is the way you guys finished last week's opportunity. Okay, the way you guys finished, it was a much different result or much different atmosphere as far as you guys' body language compared to the spring. The spring, you got that foot put in your ass and you, you tanked out early. Not all of you, but the majority of you, some of you guys that played in that game, you tanked. This game, because of the additions that we made, the additions that we made, some of you guys that came and wasn't a part of that as far as being on the field, you guys seeing who we really are and what we here to accomplish. That's this opportunity. Something's bothering me right now, though. I just got to be honest. I'm feeling it. It feels like we've already accomplished what we set out to accomplish. We haven't. We got another step to take, and it's got to be a meaningful step. It's got to be a meaningful step. We haven't arrived. We've got an invitation to a championship. Here's what you guys got to do. Everybody in this room, man, trust your coaches. Trust us. We Believe what we're telling you. Trust what we're telling you. And then go out and execute what we coached you to do. It's that simple. We haven't started fast offense. I'm going to leave you with this. The reason why we haven't started fast, in my opinion, is because we do not execute our techniques and our fundamentals faster than our opponents. Hey, great stuff there from Coach Mark Marcuson and Coach Jason Phillips, uh, offensive uh, uh, quarterbacks coach, uh, wide receivers coach, uh, Jason Phillips, uh, as well as Coach Markson, offensive line coach. But we start off with Coach Markson. Uh, they remember November. I mean, uh, that is uh, definitely a theme that is underscored what he was talking about with regards to being prepared uh, and knowing what you, knowing your assignments, knowing your line calls, knowing that all corners going to come with some heat. Uh, we both know the defense coordinator for Alcorn, uh, Cedric Thornton. He loves dialing up pressure. Got to be ready to see. Got to be ready for it. He's going to bring it, man. This offensive line is going to be tested today. Uh, and they've been tested all year. And now, at the end of the day, we won all of our games uh, in the swag. So we're expecting that same outcome. But 
this is one of those games where you got to dig deeper, man. Mm. You got to prove that you want to run the ball. You got to have some pride about running the ball. And you're going to hear from Coach Pollock uh, when we get to that segment, talk about that. But uh, he, he, Coach Markson started off, man, they remember November. Like, we have gone undefeated in the SWAC in September, undefeated in the SWAC in October. And now here we are uh, in November, and we got Southern, uh, you know, last week, and here we are with Alcorn to finish out. But if we yeah. don't keep finishing, no one's going to remember September. No one's going to give a damn about October. Yeah. Like, you've got to finish out. And, and as Coach Fleet keeps saying, this is unfinished business. Yeah, yeah, unfinished business. Uh, coach Jay Field, wide receivers coach, uh, you know, he, he, he also is a tone setter, if you will. And you saw in the video, uh, trust your coaches. <laughs> is he? <laughs> Yeah. Is he <laughs> the ultimate tone setter? Yeah, is he a tone, tone setter? You know, and, and a lot of times, Chuck, you know, we could try to take you guys inside. Uh, Coach Prime has blessed us with that opportunity to be embedded in the program, but there's still so much we can't show you because it it would violate the competitive integrity of the process. So some of the coach talks when we get into particular play designs and what is motivating who and that kind of thing, we leave that out. But we can tell you this, that uh, Jason Phillips, uh, wide receivers coaches, and on that offensive staff, he's excited about the opportunity uh, yeah. with Alcorn Secondary because Alcorn Secondary has given up some big plays this year, and yeah. uh, we want our turn at getting one yeah. of those big plays. So uh, he, he's a motivational guy, and so we are looking forward to seeing uh, – uh, what can happen downfield? You know, uh, uh, Malachi is not playing today, uh, but that opens up some more opportunities for Shane Hooks, for, uh, yeah. for Joshua Lanier Lotto, for Trevante yeah. Rucker. We are deep in the receiver room, and so those guys are going to get some opportunities for some balls that would have gone the direction of 13. Now they're going to be spread around some. Yes, indeed. Trust your coaches. Trust your coaches. Believe what they are telling you. Like I said, and we marvel at our, our coaches' uh, coaching prowess week in, week out. Uh, the in-game adjustments, the motivation, and uh, Coach J. Field was underscoring that again with regards to what they're looking for from their receiving core uh, this week. So. Don't look at me, Chuck. Shit, they, they, oh, I said the S word. I suppose I can say <laughs> hell and damn. Chuck, <laughs> man, Chuck, oh, he look at me, but man, look how you said it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like that's hey, oh, what more can man. we say about the wide receivers opportunity, the offensive line opportunities? One thing I want to point out to you, and it may again come up in a later segment, but watch for the wide receivers and their improved blocking this week. Hmm. Okay. The running game just ain't on the offensive line of the running back. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of times the run gets stops because a receiver didn't cut across and get that safety. A receiver let go of the DB that he was supposed to check up for the uh, the run to go that way. Uh, so that was a point of emphasis this week. So let's see if the receivers are going to go downfield as we know we can against the secondary. Let's also watch their blocking. No doubt. No now doubt. Michael Irvin once said, "I don't get paid to block." <laughs> but yeah, but that was the playmaker. Like, yeah. like you got to get like there. Coach Prime said last week, "You got to get there first. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, we take a look now at uh, Coach uh, Michael Pollock. He, he also had great motivating words. Uh, quarterback OC uh, with regards to this upcoming week uh, going against all corners. So we'll take a look at that video now. Is everybody's gonna get out there. You know what I mean? If we give our best, we're gonna win. Y'all make something. Y'all believe that? Okay. If we give our best and they give their best, we're gonna win football games. And that's, that's the best situation to be in. To know that if we play the best we can play, and it doesn't matter how the other team plays, we're going to come out on top. Okay, another thing about being a part of a program like that, you know, is the, is high, is the expectation. If you expect to win, then you know how to handle it when you do win. You know what I mean? Okay, you, when you expect to win a football game, What's there to go out there and, and, and have after the game antics for? You know what I'm saying? Hey, we did what we came here to do. We about to get on the bus and go home. That's what we came to do. Okay? The run game takes all 11 people. If you watched the film last week, you're going to see that we didn't have all 11 people on the same page in the run game. I told you that it's easy to blame the offensive line. Yeah, that was the thing they needed to do better. But every, every position, I can show you every play where somebody in another position don't play offensive line, they do what they're supposed to do, and that guy made the tackle. Okay? Guys, it has got to be a point of pride, a point of emphasis, that we go out there and run the ball great. We knew that they... Uh, each week is going to be like that. Each week. 
Coach Prime told us that, and that's what it is. We're playing for a championship each and every game. Nobody said it's going to ever be easy. That's why I put up there the first one. you got to persevere, and that's what we did throughout the game. All right, we're getting everybody's best uh, each and every weekend. Each and every weekend. These, these guys we're playing, these teams we're playing, we can't look at records. We can't look at who's over there in those helmets or what we're seeing in a film all week. All right, the next one. I agree with DT wholeheartedly. We believed in the fourth quarter. You heard that stat that Coach Week said. Some kind of way we got to be able to have that mentality throughout the football game, though. Some kind of way, because in the fourth quarter, we made our mind up to go out there and just dominate people. All right. I remember that last drive, we was in the huddle and the offense with a bunch of guys said, we finna go score, and that's what they went out there and did. Defense said in the second half, can you screen the whole game, but they not gonna score. But that's the mentality we got here to improve on third down. The details in third down, what do we call them? Uh, I gotta be better on third down. Players gotta be better on third down. We got to be able to sustain drive. We were only be able, uh, we're only able to carry uh, 54 total plays. We're better than that in a, as an offense, and that's on me. I have to make sure we're detailing our assignments on the run game. This week, this is a 4-2-5 defense. 4-2-5 defense, even front. We, we do a great job when we see even fronts. We run the ball well. So that's what they're going to play. Be detailed. The turnovers, I think this was a real issue for us. Three turnovers really set us back this weekend. And we have previously have not turned the football over. We cannot turn the football over. All right, and the discipline. We all saw what happened after the game. We have got to be disciplined in those situations because now it could be a situation we don't have everybody going into this weekend. All right, we have to be disciplined. It may be a few exotic ways, so we got to be on point with that. Big game this weekend, but like I said, every weekend for us from here on out is like a championship game. It's not going to be easy. Everybody got it. You know, Neely, you touched on something that was a point of emphasis this past week. It's going to take all 11 in regards to this run game. Wide receivers got to make blocks and you make mention of it. It's not always on the offensive line. It takes all 11 guys doing what they need to do. And it's a mindset. You know, our coaches have drilled that in all week. It's a mindset. You got to want to run the ball. The running backs got to run a want to run the ball. The offensive line has got to want to run block. The wide receivers, the tight ends have got to want to do their part. Uh, and Coach Taylor did not relieve responsibility of himself. He said, I've got to stick to it. I've got to call the right run plays at the right time to get you guys going. We are all in this together to establish this run game that we know can be dominant. So I am looking for that today to see if we're going to yield a dominant run game against Alcorn as we head into the SWAG championship. Another theme that came up with regards to uh, Coach Taylor and Coach Pollock, uh, being disciplined. Uh, we, we know these are heated rivalries. Uh, we know there's going to be John, Lil' Wolfen going back and forth. Got to keep our head when all about your losing name. Well, you know, because here's the thing, Chuck. Who does who does Alcorn play next week? Good point. Who do we play next? Nobody. Oh, well, Swag Championship the week Swag after. Championship, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we have something else left is my point. Sure. We, sure. Can't, we can't have uh, players getting suspended off of a lack of discipline. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, so we're going to get goaded into stuff like we, we have too much at stake. So yeah. we got to stay focused. You're not going to see the antics post game uh, like you saw down at Southern because we got to roll into this swag championship with a full roster with no mistakes allowed. So, yes, the emphasis this week was on discipline. Uh, Coach Prime owned it. He took responsibility for, it. you know, sure. a lot of folks in our fan base are saying, oh, that was nothing. Nobody did this. Nobody did that. They did what the coaches told them not to do. Yeah, yeah, great point. Shake hands, go to the locker room. We didn't do that. So right. that's that's why you see the coach making the apologies, Coach Prime. That's why you see the emphasis on discipline. It's not about what the fans think is trivial or what the fans may think is not a big deal. It's about having this, this team do as instructed in the little things because that's what builds to the big things. That's what builds to the big things. And like you said, it was – it is a, a theme that underscored the week with regards to going forward. So, a lot to play for. We don't want to lose anybody else. Either. Cannot. Will not. There you go. In the words of Michael Singletary, won't do it. Won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it. Won't Can't do it. Refuse do it. to do exactly. it. Exactly. I'll get a penalty before I do it. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, we talked a lot about the offense on the offensive side of the ball. 
what would we be doing if we did not talk about this tremendous defense? Coach Jeff Weeks, as usual, brings it hot and heavy. Let's take a look at what Coach Jeff Weeks had to say to the team. Go watch tape. Those are facts. And you're not getting any better. And that's on you guys. Some of you. You want to play? Get better at pad level. Get better with toughness. Some of you guys are coming here and you're playing good. Why? Because you got fundamentals. You got to learn them here if you haven't had them. It doesn't matter where you start in this world. It matters where you finish. And we ain't finishing. We ain't getting better. Because we're not flexible. Why? Because we're out of shape. We're not bending well. I'm talking about all you young guys. All you non starters. And some of you guys that are starting. The blanket statement get better. Some of you are starting to get better. But it's a grind getting better. It's a conscientious effort. I'm going to get low. I'm going to put my face in there. I'm going to get hit in the mouth. Then I'm going to hit people in the mouth. You think you're going to win every damn war, war on here? No, you're going to go against the Wentworth that's played 16 years in the league from LSU. You're going to go against that kid. That same kind of mentality, offensive lineman that battles you. Because they got the same mentality. And when you do, it's a hell of a fight. And that's what we need. That's what we're trying to de develop. That's the standard we're looking for. Not the same standard over and over and over and over again. The standard's got to get up here. So you guys do it. Watch, them, watch the damn scout team tape. Awful. Not running to the ball. Come on, guys. It's your career. I'm just a coach. I'm just trying to get you there. You're not supposed to like me every day, especially during individual. All right, we got pursuit. Let's go. Come on, let's have a good practice. That wasn't an act. <laughs> Coach Jeff Weeks, man, I, think I could watch Weeks all day, man. He, he he brings it every week, man. You're not supposed to like me, day in, day out. Particularly doing individuals. And, and, man, the one thing when I love seeing these guys coach and the passion they coach with, you would think our record was one in nine. Mm. You would think our record is one in ten. You'd think we were two and eight. Like, yeah. they coach – with a style that, no, that's not good enough. As yeah. good as our defense has been playing, as good as our defensive line has been playing, that's still the type of coaching that they get week in and week out, day in and day out, because we're not maximizing our potential. We're not playing true Tiger football that we've been coached to play, so there's still some meat on the bone. Let's go get it. Standard keeps should keep getting higher and higher week in, week out. Uh, interesting tidbit. Uh, last few games, we scored 34 points in the fourth quarter, and our opponents have been blanked in the fourth quarter. Let's not wait until the fourth quarter. Assignment, alignment, technique. Assignment, alignment, and technique. That's where we get off at. That's what we got to focus on, attention on the details. Got to know your assignment. Got to be lined up in the right gap and got to use your technique, the right technique, to stop the play. That's what's going to be the emphasis for this defensive line today is just those three little things. Just those three little things. Yeah. Know your assignment, know your alignment, and use your technique to get the job done. Well, we know this Alcorn team, they are uh, a tough team, championship tested, championship medal. Uh, borrow a term from uh, Rudy Tomjanovich, uh, never underestimate the heart of a champion. And they play like it. They showed it last week against Prairie View uh, in terms of getting the win against Prairie View. Uh, keeping their uh, postseason hopes uh, alive. Alive, uh, but I, it's on life support. It's on Cross Street at UMC with a lot of tubes hooked up to it. But it's alive. I hear the, but that, it's alive. the distance between those beeps are getting further and further apart. Further apart, <laughs> exactly. But you talk about guys like uh, Felix Harper, or Charles Pringle, uh, Nico Duffy on the offensive side of the ball. We had an opportunity to sit down and talk with the voice of the swag. Uh, he is the voice of the Alcorn State Brave, Charles Edmonds, to give us an overview of this Alcorn Brave football team. And welcome into the pregame show. And as always, we scout the opposition, and we have none other. I call him. He is the voice of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, also the voice of the Alcorn State Braves, Charles Edmonds. Welcome in to the pregame show. Man, I am honored, and it is a pleasure. I've seen the pregame show on all these different platforms, and to be a part of this, uh, I feel pretty good. I appreciate it. <laughs> 
<laughs> no doubt about it, Charles, man. I always appreciate you, man. And you're a mentor of mine, definitely with regards to play by play. And uh, it's an honor to have you on. No problem. I remember you calling me, um, maybe been a couple of years ago. You wanted, you get ready to jump into this thing. Like, what I need to do? Who do I need to talk to? What equipment I need to get? And so, uh, <laughs> hey. Did I did I know two or three years later you'd be off and running doing this? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> off and running. Well, as Jack can say, all corn. It's the Soul Bowl. Nothing else needs to be said. It is one of the most intense rivalries uh, in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Uh, when you take a look at it from your perspective, uh, all corn. They're still right in the fight to try to get to the SWAC championship. What do they need to do this weekend to get the W against Jackson State? Man, it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge. I mean, clearly, when you look at your team, you look at Jackson State. I mean, it starts and stops with that freshman quarterback and Shadur Sanders and what he's been able to do. I mean, in my opinion, Charles Bishop, when I look at him and I look at Jackson State, they're actually a year ahead of schedule as far as I'm concerned. I mean, what I expected to see this year, I was expecting to see it next year. I mean, because you know, with freshman quarterbacks, it's always a, a, a back and forth. I mean, with a freshman, you, you never know what you're going to get. You 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 could get something. Um, you you could get something great. You could get something the other way. And so it's just one of those deals where you just don't know what to expect. But he's been something special. And he's carried that team, and he played like a veteran down the stretch last week, uh, down ten, making a big play. And I think one of the keys is going to be our front line being able to get home because we're going to blitz. We're going to try to get to him. We're going to try to get to rattle him. And if we don't get home, he's going to make plays with his feet. And we saw it with his arm last week and making the big throw down the stretch when he counted. So even though he's a freshman, he's not playing like one. Uh, you mentioned the defensive side of the ball for all four and Juwan Taylor. He has had a huge season this past season for the break. He has. I mean, he's a kid from, from right here in Jackson. A uh, very humble kid. He came up with a big pick uh, against uh, Grambling to seal it. He's all over the football as a ball hawk. You know, he's, he's got to be able to, to, to make some plays and, and wreak some havoc if uh, we're going to have a chance. You know, we've been banged up on that side of the ball, on the secondary, on the back end. Our front line has been banged up. But Fred McNair makes no excuses about it. We're going to get probably another starter back today. So we'll have three of our four starters probably back today for this game, in which at one point we had most of our defensive line wiped out due to injuries. So, we, you know, we're trying to piece this thing together, still in it, and uh, we got to find a way to make it happen. Sure thing, of course, the Jackson State defense is going to have to be ready uh, for this uh, bevy of playmakers for all corn when you're talking about uh, Felix Harper, Stafford Anderson, uh, Nico Duffy. He's closing in on 1,000 yards. And, of course, LaCharles Pringle is all over the place. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's going to be my pregame show guest. Uh, I mean, he's a humble kid from down the coast. What a lot of people don't know is with Charles Pringle's a pretty good bowler. I mean, he, he loves to bowl. I, you know, I, I can bowl. He says he's got a 205 average. I mean, that's that's big time <laughs> stuff. And what he says he does, he looks at uh, bowling matches as kind of a motivational thing to get him fired up before every game. And so that's that's one of the you know interesting nuggets about him. Very quiet kid. Uh, and he, he admits that he didn't have the greatest of the year this year. The defense has been kind of collapsing on him a little bit. But for him to admit that, I think, is quite humbling and it's kind of refreshing. But, you know, we're going to have to get the ball to him, Juan Anthony, um, you know, a couple of playmakers, you know, bowler. And we're, we're going to have to make some plays to stretch this Jackson State defense. The sure thing. There you have it. The Alcorn State Braves. Uh, it is the Soul Bowl, Capital City Classic, whatever you want to call it. But it is one of the best rivalries in all of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. It's going to be fun. Looking forward to seeing you, Charles, Saturday. Appreciate it, man. It should be fun. Man, it's going to be a packed house. I'm excited. I'm ready. Yes, indeed. Looking forward to it. Well, that's what we have for the pregame show, and we'll see you on the other side. Tell you what, Charles Edmonds sets up this game for us with regards to taking a look at the Alcorn State Braves, uh, and we talk about their playmakers, Felix Harper uh, against Prairie View. He went 18 of 28, 263 yards and a couple of touchdowns. And you talk about this running game for the Alcorn State Braves, Stafford Anderson, uh, Nico Duffy. Nico Duffy has 800-some-odd uh, yards. He's closing in on a 1,000-yard uh, rushing season for the Alcorn Braves. And then you talk about the, the passing prowess uh, of Alcorn. You're talking about uh, wide receivers, playmakers, with Charles Pringle, 
huge game against Prairie View. Four catches for 119 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Montario Hunt. Uh, you also have uh, C.J. Bowler, who is another unsung uh, player for this Alcorn State team. And then on the defensive side of the ball, like we mentioned, uh, Cedric Thornton, he is known around the league uh, with regards to his blitz scheme, the way he dials up pressure uh, for this Alcorn State break uh, team. Juwan Taylor, huge game against Prairie View, nine tackles in that game. Uh, uh, talk about young man Heron. Uh, he had 12 tackles in that game. Claudius Cherilus, uh, he had nine tackles in that game against Prairie View. That was a huge win that Alcorn had against Prairie View uh, on last week, 31-29. So when you take a look at this team, uh, they are a dangerous team. And as Neely and I mentioned, uh, they are a team that uh, still has uh, hopes of getting to the SWAG championship. Again, they will need help. They will need to win today against Jackson State, tall order. And then they'll need a little bit of help next week uh, from Prairie View. So as we kind of take a look at this Jackson State Alcorn game, looking forward to getting things set up, we'll take a quick break here on the pregame show. It's Bishop and Neely here on the Black College Sports Network. Okay, so how long have you been coming to stay? Uh, since 1987. I've forever loved Stansburgers because of the people. Uh, they're real people. They, they, they help the community and their family own and operate. And the food, the quality, and service has always been phenomenal. And anywhere I'm at, I, I always recommend people to them. It's, it's great food, and you get enough love for your money. If you need a good place to eat and you want a good environment to support the community, and support effort of, of the Jackson community, I recommend Stamps uh, Super Burger TV because, like I said, this is the dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app as we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dashboard as well as the upcoming week of HBCU sports with me the Dean the College of HBCU sports on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app as we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dashboard as well as the upcoming week of HBCU Sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU So welcome back into the pregame show with Bishop and Neely here on the Black College Sports Network, live from Mississippi Veterans. Memorial Stadium. And there you have, it. we kind of laid out today uh, in regards to the offense, defense, special teams, uh, looking to get this offensive uh, show on the road, if you will, for Jackson State, looking especially at the run game. Uh, we heard from Coach Pollock, we heard from T.C. Taylor with regards to uh, what needs to go into the run game. It has to be 11 guys doing their best uh, to complete their job. Uh, we talked about the theme, unfinished business, uh, huge win over Southern last week to secure the SWAC East. We will be playing for the SWAC championship game, but still unfinished business. We still have all foreign to get through today. This all foreign team presents all sorts of issues. Uh, defensively, they love to bring pressure. Offensively, they have playmakers, Felix Harper, uh, Charles Pringle, uh, CJ Bowler, and Nico Duffy closing in on a thousand yards. Neil, man, I tell you what, we covered a lot of it today. We covered a lot today, Chuck. I've been outside. I thought we were going to do another live shot, but couldn't get the uh, the signals to work right, so I'm back indoors with you in the nice croissants. Try to say that with an <laughs> accent. But the crowd is picking up two hours or so to kick off, well, hour and a half to kick off, and uh, exciting energy out there. The players are starting to walk in. Uh, Junior was out there walking the field. They got the suits on. 
so uh, Shiloh is walking the sidelines. So the band has not marched in yet, but that's coming up soon. You will now be out there in the next 10 minutes or so. It's been a phenomenal show, Soul Bowl show. Uh, of course, you know, we're coming every week and, and we will be there uh, for the SWAG championship as it yes. be here uh, yes. for our next pregame live show. But you can expect more content every week as we get ready to recognize the seniors as well. So you hear the traffic in the yeah. background, they're coming in and picking up the plaques to get ready to recognize our seniors on today. It's the, it's the beauty of the live show. But like you said, they are going to recognize the senior, senior day here uh, for Jackson State. What could be better? Then going out with the Soul Bowl, Jack and say be all going. Nothing could be better championship and then going out with a celebration bowl could. Yes, Miss Toya, you. hand me one of those so I can show show the audience. I don't want to mix them up though. It could be it could be that one. Any any one of them. Y'all hold yeah, on one wanna second. Be, I want to show y'all the, yeah. the senior record. Man, that's a perfect one. That's Big a 10. perfect one. But you Big can show 10. it right there on yours, Chuck. Yes, indeed. This is so this tremendous. is what the senior players are getting today, uh, so, and they're getting that ready now. Uh, so that's Warren Newman's right there. So we recognize the senior. Chuck, get thing back to it. Nice try to go. <laughs> <laughs> so we yeah, recognize exactly. the seniors today. So they're coming in and picking up the plaques to take out to the field, and we got to get out there for that as well. But we got a couple of segments that we're going to run while we're technically off the air live that you'll get to see. Uh, so stay tuned to the pregame show kickoff here is at 1 p.m. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Chuck, let's talk about those sponsors, man. Terrace Harris. Yes. Terrace Harris has been with us. Uh, he's with the Cochran Group here in Jackson, Johnny Cochran's law firm. My frat brother, you know. I, I know I know, Chuck. I know it hurts to sting a little bit. But <laughs> Churchill Smoke Shop has been with us. Cannot forget Chambers and Gaylord Law Firm. Been down with us before we know it being down with us was. Has always been a sponsor. Bio Steel, they specially sponsor straight from the Tiger's Mouth, our sideline interviews with the players. And, hey, we were at Sal and Mookie's last night with yes, several of the coaches. Uh, you know, so we, we love to have the sponsorship partnership with Bravo, Mangia Bene Catering, Sal and Mookie's, and Broad Street Bakery, who always gets us breakfast ready for the show. Always. So those are the sponsors. Yes, and we got a couple more things to touch on. Beautiful crowd out there. Beautiful day. The shades are hitting, and the beer is always – Hey man, Coach Prime left the beer game, man. Yeah, Coach Prime huh. left the beer game. He, you know, he came came back with us and was rocking the gray beard. I was really feeling it. Then he got to Baton Rouge and, you know, cut it off, man. He left me hanging. It's back to business, Prime. But if Gillette cuts the check, Dealy shaving his too. There you go. <laughs> the, the beard is for sale. The beard is, yeah, the beard for, sale. is for sale. You better believe it. <laughs> well, as always, in closing, as we get ready to take a look around the swag. We say it every week, Coach Lip, famous words, Coach Edward Lipscomb. Uh, we got a team, by golly. We're going to fight, by golly. We're going to win, by golly. Until next week, it's Bishop. It's Neely here on the pregame show on the Black College Sports Network. Four, three. Another great week of action last week in the athletic conference as Jackson State they are your SWAC East champions. They go to Southern and knock off the Jaguars. The SWAC West still up for grabs as Prairie View and Alcorn will go neck and neck all the way to the last week of the season. Let's get ready to go around the SWAC on the pregame show. start things off in Florida. It is the Florida Blue Florida Classic. Huge rivalry between Bethune-Cookman and the Florida a and Rattlers. Bethune-Cookman comes in 2-8, and 2-5 and five in conference play. FAMU 8-2, and 6-1 and one in conference play. We take a look at the Rattlers. Rashawn McKay, last week a huge game against UAPB. He went 22-31, of 31, 383 yards and five touchdowns for the Rattlers. Isaiah Land, he had a huge game. Another sack. He adds to his NCAA and SWAT leading sack total. He has 17 sacks on the season. But then Cookman, they go to Grandma. They get the win over there at Exit 81. 31 to 14 over Grandma last week. Jimmy Robinson had a huge game. He led the rushing attack with 98 yards on 15 carries. As BCU, they grind out 177 yards on the ground last week in Grambling. Huge game, huge rivalry. That'll be a 2.30 kickoff from Orlando, and that game can be seen 
on ESPN+. Plus. Let's take it over to Texas as the Prairie View a and Panthers. They will step out of conference to take on SEC foe, the Texas A&M Aggies. This game will be a tough game as Prairie View tries to bounce back from a tough, tough loss last week at the hands of the Alcorn Braves. But bright spot for the Panthers, Juwan passed 339 yards passing last week and three touchdowns as the Panthers' comeback attempt failed just short as they lost to the Braves 31-29. to That will be an 11 a.m. kickoff from Kyle Field and College Station, and that game can be seen on the SEC Network. Let's go across over into Alabama as UAPB will take on the Alabama A&M Bulldogs. UAPB, they look to bounce back from a 37-7 hands of the Florida A&M. Kobe Watts in that game. Kobe Watts on the defensive side of the ball for the Golden Lions. He had 15 tackles leading the defensive effort for the Golden Lions. A&M, huge road win last week at Texas Southern. SWAC Offensive Player of the Week, Aquil Glass. Get these numbers. He goes 33 of 52 562 yards in the air. That was a huge game for Aquil Glass as he keeps leading the swag uh, in total yards passing. This was a huge 299 yards and four touchdowns. Running back for the Texas week for Texas Southern. We take a look at Bama State. They will try to get back on the winning side of the ledger as they drop the road game. And they had a being the last week to the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. They lost that one 44 to 31. But they are led on the defensive side of the ball by Christian Clark and Urshad Davis. Uh, this will be a 2 p.m. kickoff from Montgomery, and that game can be seen on ESPN+. And we close things out. What else can you say? It is the Soul Bowl. It is all corn visiting Jackson State. Nothing else needs to be said about this game. It is one of the fiercest rivalries in all of HBCU football. We take a look at the all corn State Braves as they are still playing uh, for Felix Harper, Nico Duffy, LaCharles Pringle, they lead everything on the offensive side of the ball. Jawan Taylor leads the Braves on the defensive side of the ball. We take a look at Jackson State. Huge, huge win on the road last week as they knocked off Southern 21-17. Big comeback in the fourth quarter. Shador Sanders leads a game-winning drive as he found Malachi Wyman for a huge touchdown late in that game. And Shiloh Sanders, he closed things out with a game-clinching interception. And when you take a look at this defense, James Houston, Keontae Hampton, Aubrey Miller, Antoine Owens, they are the number four defense in the nation, and they lead the nation in sacks with 44 coming into this game. It is a huge, huge game. It is all for, and it is Jackson State.